And specifically in the mentoring program, we make intergenerational matches. So we pair girls who are in high school with adult volunteer women in their respective communities so that they can make lifelong connections with each other and support girls in exploring their passions, graduating from high school, um, and spending time exploring what we call the four W's. And that stands for wisdom, wellness, wallet, and world. And so tonight we're kind of gonna be opening our doors for folks to explore all together, not just as Girl Forward, but as a larger community, the, the, the W, the wellness W. Um, and so that's really exciting. And we're bringing together experts in our community, some of our mentors, some of our mentees, um, girls across our programs, and then supporters and fans to discuss wellness, specifically in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and just a few housekeeping notes before we get started. So this event will be recorded and the recording will be sent out to everybody who has registered following the event. If you need any kind of tech assistant during this next hour together, please contact Emily Ramstetter and she is listed on here as Emily Tech Support. Um, and you can use your individual chat function and chat her one-on-one -on -one for tech support. And then if you have questions throughout this event or you'd just like to add to the conversation, please feel free to use the chat. This is a friendly, welcoming space. So you can always chat a question or a thought, et cetera. And we also hope to have some time for, to open it up for questions at the end. And then finally, we're going to ask that everyone who's not participating in the panel tonight, uh, turn off their video and mute their microphone. And, um, and we'll actually, it looks like everyone's camera is off right now. And so then what we'll do so that you can see all the folks in the panel kind of spotlighted on your screen is you can actually hide anyone who's not on the panel. You can hide their video so that it just spotlights folks in the panel. So the way that you do that, if you are on a computer right now, if you hover over your square, your uh, image square, there's a little button that has three dots, like an ellipsis on it. And you can click that and there's an option to hide non-video participants. So let's go ahead right now and try that. So if you have your camera off and you're on a computer, you can select that um, and it should just spotlight me right now. You shouldn't be able to see anyone else. And then if you're on a phone, the way that you do that is you click the three dots in the at the bar on the bottom of your screen. Um, and then you click meeting settings. And then there's a little toggle button and you can toggle the button next to the thing that says show non-video participants. So now it should be gray instead of green. And so now when everyone looks at their screen, um, you should see only our awesome speakers during this event. So. Um, and again, if you have tech, need tech assistant, you can chat Emily Ramstetter. So finally, I would like to thank the Girl Forward Board of Directors and all of the staff who made this event possible tonight. We really appreciate your labor and your commitment to Girl Forward and service to this community. And with that, with that said, I'd like to introduce Joy Freeman. Um, Joy is one of our valued board members and also the founder and CEO of Remnant Strategy. So pass it to Joy. Thank you, Ariel. So as a representative of Girl Forward's Board of Directors, I'm excited to welcome you all to this event. One year into the pandemic, wellness has taken on a new meaning for us all. Over the course of this past year, Girl Forward has worked with closely two, close to 200 girls, along with volunteers and their families to meet the emerging needs of our community during the pandemic. And none of this work will be possible without your support. So thank you to everyone who has made a donation. And for those of you who have not had a chance yet, we hope you will find a way to give in support of Girl Forward's work. Now I would like to introduce Dr. Asra Ali. Dr. Ali is an accomplished dentist, educator, and member of the Girl Forward Board of Directors. Dr. Ali. 
Hello, thank you for that, Joy. Um, nice to see you virtually. <laughs> I'm honored to join the conversation tonight and introduce some amazing women. Um, tonight's program is actually especially um, significant for me for many reasons. One, um, because I'm a frontline healthcare professional myself, and I listened to Dr. Aziki's daily reports intently over the last year. The otherwise normal daily routine of going to work, coming home from work, were all particularly stressful to say the least during this past year during the pandemic. But caring for health, for the care and uh, for the health and well-being of um, patients and the training of future doctors is an oath I took. So just like the other healthcare workers out there, we all did our best to serve and did what we were supposed to do. And I believe actually one of the silver linings was that we as a healthcare community, we even improved upon patient care through even more stringent protective protocols and whatnot. Though hearing those daily reports was difficult, I found front comfort in Dr. Iziki's leadership as I saw in her a sincere, empathetic leader who was determined to do her best to provide the right advice and right health care for everyone, despite the many challenges present. I can't imagine how difficult it was for, for her and the weight of what she shoulders. Um, I remember the day she broke down in front of the camera. Sorry, Dr. Siki, but that just testified to the um, weight you probably had to deal with. And it reminded me of how everyone is being affected by this pandemic. Every person has their own story through this ordeal and all the way from someone like Dr. Izike to the Girls Forward mentors and mentees. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you everybody for what you've done in this year and especially Dr. Izike for navigating these uncharted waters for us. I'd like to first introduce um, our moderator, Mayumi Grigsby. Umi is, uh, for short, is an attorney, a, a, a published author, the Chief of Policy and Advocacy for the City Clerk of Chicago, and she's our Vice Chair of Girl Forward's Board of Directors. She'll be facilitating the discussion with Dr. Izike. And I have the pleasure of also introducing Dr. Izike, who is the Director of the Illinois Department of Public Health, the first African-American woman appointed to lead the 143-year-old state agency. She is a board certified internist and pediatrician who has held many transformational roles in healthcare in the Chicagoland area. She's a nationally recognized expert in the area of healthcare within the juvenile detention and justice systems, um, a graduate of Harvard University and the University of California, San Diego School of Medicine. Um, she's a certified correctional health professional and diplomat of both the American Board of Internal Medicine and the American Board of Pediatrics. Also an assistant professor of pediatrics at Rush Medical College. So as you can see, quite accomplished. She also has earned numerous awards, including the 2020 Lester McGeever Individual Service Award from the Chicago Urban League and the Health Innovator Award for our, from Erie Family Health Center. Um, she speaks many languages and she's also been a past board member of Girl Forward from 2012 to 2017. From the bottom of my heart, once again, uh, thank you, Umi, and thank you, Dr. Azike, for navigating these uncharted waters for us and being a principled, fearless guide for Illinois during the pandemic. Thank you so much, Asra. Um, so first I wanna say thank you again, Dr. Uh, Ezeke. I happen to know what you had to do to get here um, and to be live. And so I just wanted to say thank you. And I wanna brag a little bit, which is that I already know your answers to some of these questions. Um, is there anything that you wanted to say just before we start out with our, our conversation? Gotta turn off mute. <laughs> Just wanted to start off by thanking Dr. Ali for her kind uh, words and introduction. And I'm just honored to be back uh, with Girl Forward, um, an organization that I'm very passionate about. So 
thanks uh, Val and all those who helped uh, to make this invitation possible. I'm really excited to be with these be, with these women and be a part of this organization again. So you're going to hear thank you a lot. So I'm going to stop that part of uh, this first question. But at uh, Asra Ali or Dr. Ali mentioned, um, you were a past uh, board member of Girl Forward. And so wanted to talk about what drove your commitment initially to this community of girls, to this community of immigrants, this community of refugees. Um, what was the impetus be uh, behind your involvement? Sure, so I was very uh, opportune to be made aware of this wonderful organization. It was very new, uh, early in its, uh, you know, in its beginning stages, but the mission was so clear. We all know how important women are and to become a woman, you go through the stage of being, you know, a younger woman, a young girl who develops into a woman. And so the responsibility of these young girls and these women uh, it, it's lifelong and being able to have the, the right building blocks, to be able to have the right support. It's hard enough to be a woman in this world. It's even doubly hard to be coming into a new foreign land after whatever circumstances you've already been through and still try to, you know, carry your families through. And so being a part of something so monumental and supporting these women in their American journey uh, was really an honor. And so that's why I was so happy to be a part of it for so long. And um, we talked earlier about your amazing career and your amazing professional journey. And I wanted to ask you, did you have any mentors growing up and how do you think that impacted your, prof your professional or and personal journey? You know, um, as women, it, it, I think everyone needs a mentor. You always want to have someone who has, has the look ahead. They're, they're maybe going or already are where you want to be. And someone who's looking out for you, who's thinking about you, thinking about how to help you become your best you. So having mentors is critical. I think what's even maybe more special now is to be in this middle space where I still have incredible mentors that I lean on, that I depend on, but I also have a little bit of something to share. And so being able to look uh, to the side, to the, behind me and help share what little I have learned, be able to share that with people, you know, especially women coming behind me, I consider it a blessing and a joy to be able to do that. So I think at every stage of life, you really want to take advantage of people who have gone ahead of you and also keep that door open for people coming behind you and share the wisdom and expertise on that end. So I definitely want to say you have more than a little to share. Um, and as evidenced by that, you're currently guiding the state of Illinois through the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, how do you practice self-care? How do you take care of yourself? Well, you know, to be as frank and transparent as I is the only way I can be. And it is it is hard, right? Everyone knows, everyone listening here knows how many responsibilities women, women of all ages have. I know that uh, I'm not talking to just a few people when I think about how many other people you are responsible for in addition to yourself. And that might be younger siblings, maybe even parents and everything in between. And so it is challenging, you know, when you have all these other responsibilities, other people to care for, sometimes you put yourself last. And, you know, it, in the midst of a pandemic and thinking about 12.7 million people in the state of Illinois, uh, it is hard to remember self-care. And if you don't remember it intentionally, you will be forced to remember it accidentally. Uh, and so even, um, I have gone, gone through some very dark periods uh, with this pandemic as everybody has, and that's not unique. And so that when you get really low, that's when you remember, ah, how, how do I restore myself? And it is true that you can give more, you can be more when you yourself are taken care of. You have to give out of the abundance of what you have. So when your cup is not full, it's really hard to share uh, with others. And so when I've kind of fallen, it's because I haven't done the self-care. So for me, that involves exercising. For me, that involves prayer and meditation. For me, that means surrounding myself 
with people who nurture me and support me to offset some of the negativity and some of the evil that's around. And so that is something that we have to be more intentional about doing. Therapy has been an important part of this journey as the lows have been quite low. And so seeking the help that is necessary uh, in those moments has been especially critical and part of the self-care process as well. And does it make it even harder? Um, you are a mother um, and you're also a wife and, um, and you also lead a team. And so how do you balance that, getting your self-care with making sure everyone around you, both personally and professionally, is taking care of themselves as well? So I'm sure everybody, again, I'm not saying anything that you don't know, but highlighting, I'm sure that everybody is good at taking care of others. I am great at telling my team, like, take vacation, take days off, make sure you, you know, turn your phone off. You know, I tell them that I bring in mental health counselors to support the team. We do healing circles, you know, virtually for the team. Uh, it's, you know, you take care of the husband, you take care of the kids, you're not going to leave the kids unfed or, you know, unbathed, <laughs> but it's, it's remembering to do those things for yourself. And so, you know, we put out so much and, you know, they always say on the airplane, like if there's a problem, you put your oxygen mask first and then help those around you. And women, we forget that all the time, uh, but I am trying to do what I have said to others, trying to do it internally and encouraging other people to, you know, let's, let's do this the way that we know it's supposed to be done. Even when you have to like take a pause, remind yourself and do it. That's really great advice. So um, going back to the Girl Forward community of, you know, girls, immigrants and refugees, how do you think COVID-19 is specifically impacting um, those communities? So of course, if there's something that is going to be devastating to a broad general community, uh, it's going to be even more so for people who are new to this country, people who are struggling with navigating, you know, navigating healthcare, navigating language. Uh, and so that's why Girl Forward is so critical to help, you know, help people get over those obstacles and barriers. So I'm so glad that you ladies joined this program and I hope that you have taken everything that there has been offered to you through this great program. But in general, it's, it's it potentially without good supports like a Girl Forward or some other organizations, it can be that much harder to navigate of all things a pandemic in a foreign land. And so we know that intentional outreach and support has to be given to people who are most vulnerable and that includes you know, new immigrants, refugees and the like. Something you mentioned earlier when we were speaking was that a lot of the times the girls in Girl Forward end up being sort of the CEOs of health for their own families. Um, what advice would you give them and what steps can they take to make sure they're taking care of their families? Yeah, again, even though you're young, you have huge responsibilities and so we have to just embrace that. You learning all that you can about the, the COVID vaccine, understanding about this disease, you knowing how the effects of this of virus can, can have essentially life and, and death uh, consequences. You know, I know that people are listening to you. You know, you probably speak the language, maybe have mastered the language better than others in your family. So maybe some of the information that's out there is maybe not as readily accessible by some of your family, some people, other people in your community. So your voice matters. It really matters. You saying, you know, mommy, auntie, uncle, grandpa, like you have to take this vaccine and this is why they're going to listen to you. So your voice is, is so strong and it's so needed. It's not the time to be silent. Instead, get all the information that you need to get so that you can go on and educate so many people that are depending on you for the knowledge and, and the savviness that you have developed. 
That's such great advice. And you touched on something um, that I want to talk about, which is that there tends to be a little bit of mistrust as well in certain communities. When you start talking about vaccines, when you start talking about COVID-19, you know, people still have a lot of mistrust. And so I'm just wondering, you know, outside of, I think you touched on this a little bit, what do you think, you know, the state can do? And what do you think all of us as allies can do to make sure that we address the lack of trust sometimes that exists um, around things like vaccines and things that will definitely get us out of this pandemic? Yeah, unfortunately, it's almost always the case that, you know, false news, fake news, wrong news seems to travel faster than, than the truth. And so, you know, before you can even start to explain something, you know, 50, you know, myths may have circulated that people have latched on to. And so it's really important that we identify good sources of information. And, you know, I would throw out like cdc.gov, the, Center the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, their website, cdc.gov has lots of information is updated all the time. It is available in different languages. Of course, I have to give a shout out to IDPH and our website has you know, good information, um, but you have to seek out the truth. A lot of the stuff that we see on social media, uh, you know, a lot of it isn't, isn't good information. And so make sure if you read something and you're like, wow, before you send it on, verify the information you know, you've seen it on your social media. Sometimes it'll be like, so-and-so died and people will be sending out all this stuff about, you know, a celebrity or somebody that has passed on and come to find out it's not, but it's gone to millions of people before someone can stop it in its track. So verify information, go to a trusted website, a trusted source like the CDC or IDPH or a hospital system that you might be connected to, to get real information, make sure you're spreading the right information because people are counting on your words. So to something a little bit lighter, um, this year, a lot of the girls in Girl Ford will be graduating. And so I wanted to know if there was a message that you wanted to give them, um, either them or you know, girls in, in general, what would you like to tell them for anybody who lived through this pandemic and is now graduating and moving on to the next step in their life? Well, first of all, congratulations, happy graduation. It's a wonderful milestone. Uh, you know how hard you work to get here. And it's not just the normal, yeah, I went to school and I graduated. You went to school uh, in a new land, in a whole new setting against tremendous obstacles. And then, oh yeah, let's add, add a pandemic just to make it a little bit more challenging. And nevertheless, despite all you went through before getting here, navigating this new country, navigating a pandemic, you're graduating. So all of the hardships, that you have endured for how many years, even before this pandemic, don't look at it as a negative. It has made you stronger. It means that you can handle anything. You can withstand college. For those of you moving on, and I hope many of you are, do not be afraid. Just the way that you've navigated you know, Chicago and the United States, you can take on college and be successful as well. And you should be encouraged by what you've been through and survived it and know that your future challenges, you will also be successful. Thank you so much. This has been amazing. And I know that it's been um, helpful and rewarding for everybody here. I sincerely hope you can stay um, until the end because we will be hearing from some of our, our, our Girl Ford mentees. Um, and so thank you again, uh, Dr. Zike. And we all collectively feel like we're in good hands um, knowing that you're guiding us and that you're staring us out of this pandemic. Thanks so much for having me. So um, what we're going to do now is shift a little bit um, and talk to some of our, our mentees. So um, we are going to talk um, about the Girl Forward Mentoring Program. Um, and also Dr. Azike, if you wanna look in the chat, um, you're getting a lot of love right now. So Girl Forward's mentoring program matches around 70 high school girls who identify as refugees, immigrants, and asylum seekers 
each school year with women mentors. Mentoring matches meet together weekly to talk about anything from school to relationships to careers. 100% of our mentoring program participants graduate. For the past year, mentors and mentees have been meeting virtually like a lot of us and finding new ways to support each other. I'm excited to bring in two of our mentoring program matches to chat about Dr. Zike's remark, remarks and about their own experiences during the pandemic. So first up, we have Saryu Adeni. She is a former Girl Forward mentor and current Girl Forward board member in Austin. She currently works at the Global Health Program as a Global Health Program Coordinator for UT Austin's uh, Dell Medical School and Texas Global. Thank you for being with us, Saryu. We also have Hajra Hashimi. Hajra is a student at Austin Community College. She resettled in Austin, Texas from Afghanistan with her family and has been part of Girl Forward since 2017. I will let her share later, um, but Hajra also wants to be a doctor. Nagam Almasri is a senior at Sullivan High School in Chicago. She is, current, oh, she is originally from Syria and has been a Girl Forward mentee since 2017. She is involved in Sullivan High School. Um, she is also, it's called HOSA, I hope I'm saying it right, Future Health Leaders Club and hopes to attend Northern Illinois University. Maybe, she's still weighing her options. So guys, this is like the draft. Um, if you know of any colleges um, that everybody would be lucky to have Nagam. So welcome Nagam. Elizabeth White is a current Girl Forward mentor and has a background in food justice and urban agriculture work, refugee and girls empowerment, youth leadership development, and global health equity work. She currently works as impact evaluation and strategy lead at Globe Med. Welcome. Okay, so we will start now. Um, my first question to all of you is, what are some of your reactions to hearing Dr. Ezekiel speak? I know I'm still tingling. So I'll go first. Um, and thank you for the introduction. I first want to thank Dr. Ezekiel for providing uh, such valuable information and giving us uh, great advice. And um, I want to thank her for being a frontline worker and uh, uh, putting herself at risk to protect others. And uh, my reactions to her talk was that I felt really re related to what she talked about. And uh, I thought uh, her, her information was really uh, good. And um, she talked about really important stuff, uh, such as taking care of yourself, um, providing information to others, which might be helpful. Um, just uh, all of what she talked about was really important and I felt touched by it, so. Hajar, I don't want to put you on the spot, but last night um, when we were talking, um, you had some advice actually that you wanted to share with Dr. Zike. Do you want to share it now or do you want to wait until later? I'll share it now. So my advice was um, because in this time, a lot of people don't trust uh, what they hear, especially if, if it goes against uh, their views and stuff. And um, this pandemic has proven that a lot more, um, a lot of people don't believe the science. They don't trust uh, like uh, all of the science stuff. And so my advice to a doctor, Ezekiel and uh, anyone else who, in, who is in that uh, profession is to always um, talk in a way that would be relatable and or understandable to the person, like everyday people, because they often feel that uh, what they're being told is uh, like kind of controlling them. But uh, I, don't, I don't think they get uh, that uh, what the doctors are trying to do is to protect them. So if the doctors um, talk in a way, speak in a way, um, give advice in a way that uh, shows understanding and um, it shows that uh, they know where they're coming from or, or why not they're, they might not be trusting something, it might go uh, through much um, better than going the other way. 
Thank you so much, Hajar. I think that's really helpful and it's very well said. Nagam, do you have anything you wanted to add? Well, uh, Hajira basically covered everything, but I want to say thank you so much for Dr. Zikye, like for being here and sharing her uh, experience with us. Those words that she said really inspired me and I'll hopefully take it from her and educate my family and everyone around me. Thank you so much. That's so great. That's exactly what she wants you to do is to be the CEOs of your family's health. So tell us about why and how you decided to join Girl Forward. So this time I'll start with Nagam. Um, so I decided to join Girl Forward because uh, when I came to the United States, I didn't speak English and I didn't know anyone like around me. Uh, so when I went to high school, they told us about this program and I was excited to join. So I joined their program and I, I made a really good decision joining their program because from there I met Elizabeth, uh, my mentor, and I met a lot of new people there. I met my friends as well, the friends that I have now. And I'm really glad like to be part of their community because um, as I said, I didn't know, I didn't speak English at all at first, but uh, through their summer program, I started learning English and like start speaking, start understanding what people are telling me or asking me. Uh, so it was at first difficult for me, but now it's 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 much easier than before. And now I have been like part of Girl Forward for almost uh, four to five years. That's amazing. And so you mentioned um, Elizabeth, who is your mentor. So Elizabeth, I'm going to ask you the same question. What brought you to Girl Forward as a mentor? Sure. Um, so I uh, was moving to a new city, to Chicago, and wanted to look for a way to get involved and um, and get to know my community. I was moving into the Girl Forward office was in the neighborhood that I moved to. Um, so I was really looking to build relationships and, and uh, create a meaningful uh, community and connection. And I definitely feel like I found that through Girl Forward. And so going back to you, Hadira, what brought you to um, Girl Forward? I had a similar experience as Naram, um, in which I didn't speak English um, when I came here first. Uh, I was uh, struggling with uh, going to school, understanding my teachers. I did an understanding of the subjects and coming here was a whole cultural shock for me um, because I didn't know anyone from my country here. I lived in a way, in a place there was nobody who I could uh, go, like relate to. So just um, English was a whole different thing uh, for me. I didn't uh, understand it. And um, one of my teachers, she recommended or she heard about the opportunity about Girl, of Girl Forward. She shared it with me and uh, she thought it would be good for me to uh, learn English and um, how it was only girls. She thought that um, I would feel more comfortable there um, since it was similar to how the school system was in Afghanistan, only girls and only boys. So here and then at first I wasn't uh, really looking forward to it, uh, but then she also shared it with my dad. Uh, who, who liked the idea. He also encouraged me to go because um, he was happy that it was only girls. And um, just uh, improving English was his main goal too because I was gonna go to uh, high school and that was gonna be even more hard. So, and then I went in the summer of uh, 2017 camp. And uh, since first day, I really loved it. It was great. I met a lot of new girls, made new, new friends. Uh, uh, through that, I was um, matched with uh, another mentor before Sario, and then after one year, uh, she left to another state, and then um, I was matched with Sario, she, who was uh, my mentor till last year, and is still a great friend. Um, um, so through the mentor program, I also had a lot of other um, support throughout, um, like uh, personal and school life, uh, which uh, I found really, really important and helpful. So this is great. So sorry, you tell us how you decided to come to Girl Forward. Yeah, so I heard an ad for Girl Forward on the radio here in Austin in 2016, 2017. 
Um, and it, it sounded exactly like what I'd been looking for since I returned from my two year service in the Peace Corps. Um, I was in the rural Dominican Republic working with girls and young women on community projects related to peer health, self-esteem, leadership goal setting, cross-cultural activities, very similar to Girl Forward. Um, and so I had kind of learned firsthand how building such a circle of women could be a safe space and a positive force. Um, I'm also the daughter of Indian immigrants and you know, was just looking for a way to be part of something global here in the US. So just was really grateful to find Girl Forward in my hometown. Um, and then be matched in the mentoring program with Hadra and make all these amazing friendships and be part of this community. Well, thank you all so much for being a part. Um, so I want to talk to you, Saryu and Hajera. Um, Hat, we talked a little, Ariel talked a little bit earlier about the four W's and one of them is wellness. And, you know, both of you are interested in wellness and in health. So can you tell everybody a little bit about what wellness means to you and how you've experienced this or explored this W at Girl Forward? Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> um, so for me, wellness is, is really about an ongoing practice. And the example I like to give is that you know, when you drink a glass of water or you wash your hands, it's not once and done. You're not done with that for the rest of your life. Wellness is, is to me exactly that. It's about keeping up with small things as much as you can. So, you know, whether you're having an off day or if things get totally disrupted like they did during the pandemic, you have this small practice to return to. And so Hadra and I really made it a priority to keep our time together protected. Um, you know, before the pandemic began, we might go hang out with other Girl Forward friends one day or explore town or play cricket in the park with other mentors and mentees. Um, you know, physical exercise is part of our wellness activity, but um, really most times we would sit in Hadra's house, drink some chai and have conversations about family life and her school and friends and the world, um, you know, just the two of us and sometimes her mom would also drop in. Um, and, you know, when the pandemic began, we kept checking in like that over FaceTime. And so maybe it seems small, but even when things were rough in our lives, we had this regular moment of safe, peaceful time. And, and for me, that defines wellness at Girl Forward. Hadra, do you have anything to add to that? Um, she covered a lot of it. Uh, I also want to add a few more sentences uh, in that. Um, you know, as students, we we are more likely to go through tough times or be stressed and uh, anxiety, whatever else uh, might come through us because, you know, it's it's challenging, especially if um, you're coming from a place that is 100% different than the new place you are, which uh, for me was that the case. Uh, it's, it's really challenging and um, you really need someone to be there for you, to push you. Uh, to support you, um, to just be healthy, you know. Um, I I always think uh, if I wasn't uh, supported or I if I didn't have uh, someone like Saryu uh, to be there behind me to support me with, uh, especially school, I would have uh, been one of the persons who might be like struggling or I don't know where I would be right now. Uh, so it's really important to keep, um, uh, to have someone like that to support you to help you with the uh, schools uh, and uh, that all reduces stress, uh, which, uh, you know, in return helps you with physical and mental health, uh, health stuff. That's great. So the next question is for Elizabeth and Nagam. So COVID-19 has obviously impacted all of us um, in various ways. So can you tell us about the impact of COVID-19 on both of you and your communities? Um, sure, I can go. Uh, so yeah, COVID-19 have uh, impacted all of us, like um, all of our community as well in a, in a negative way. And like it prevented us from doing a lot of things that we used to do like with our loved ones and being close to the people that like I used to spend all of my day with. And uh, Elizabeth was one of them like uh, meeting her once a week and like hanging out with her. She's, and she used to help me with my homework assignments uh, until now. So, and it was hard for me like to stop doing all of those things at once and it was shocking. Um, but like, basically I had to deal with it because I know and I understand that people's safety matters and before mine, because I, I do care about others and I know that others care about me as well. And 
uh, yeah, so it was hard for me like uh, to deal with it, but I'm trying, I'm still trying to deal with it. And it's it's also hard like to not be at Girl Forward's office because I used to spend like almost most of my day at Girl Forward and enjoy my time with them. And now it's it's all over. Yep. Tanagam, it's not all over. And let me just tell you, it's okay not to be okay because a lot of us are not okay. And we say it all the time. Some of us, a lot of times. Um, so Elizabeth, do you also want to share a little bit? Sure. Um, I think uh, COVID's affected um, a lot of what we're talking about is wellness being not just an individual thing, but how we show up for each other and show up for other people. And so for me, with my circles and communities, um, COVID has shifted, obviously, for all of us, how we show up for each other and how different that looks. Um, and so with that has come some loneliness and come some, some grief and come some loss. Um, and so um, definitely feeling that feeling of not, not being okay sometimes and what it looks like to have collective grief. Um, when we don't really have um, the means to be in person and, and feel that with each other the way we normally would. Um, I think the other thing that's interesting is how um, COVID has shown up in values differences um, with, you know, people you truly dearly love um, as maybe not believing in, in certain science or certain um, socioeconomic factors or different things that have to do with COVID and navigating that. Um, has been a really tricky thing um, for me. And that's actually, I think, also um, uh, contributed to that, that, that feeling of, of grief and loss a little bit during this time. I think that's very real. And I think a lot of people, you know, have shared experiences there. I definitely want to get, to, I was so excited about this question because I, I have some of the, the answers already, um, but both Nagam and Hajra, I know that you're both interested in the medical field in either being doctors or nurses. And so I wanna ask you about your inspiration. So I wanna start with Nagam, um, if you wanna share information for, for, um, for why. Yeah, uh, so yeah, I, I have always been passionate about being medical field since I was uh, at, like in first grade and my grandmother was like the one who's pushing me forward and like, uh, you know, giving me like uh, the advice to be in school, to go to school and like to achieve my future dreams because um, she she never went to school and she didn't learn at all. So she wanted me to study and like go further in my life. And I always been passionate about being in the medical field because there's a lot of reasons behind it. But like the most important thing is like, I want to be the reason like to save people's lives. I want to be like, because and especially young kids yeah I want to be a pediatrician because I know how hard it is like to have you know ch like the childhood taken away from a, a young kid so and I know how it feels so yeah I want to be there for all of those kids I want to have them like be at their age not to think older while they are young so and I know it's hard it's really hard like to be in medical it takes a lot of years but like I also know that like climbing the ladder step by, by step makes it easier like to reach the top and like achieve my goal. It's so, you're so wise beyond your years, honestly. Um, Hajra, do you wanna share your, your inspiration? Sure, so my uh, inspiration comes from my grandmother for, so, uh, because uh, she had a lot of health issues so, and then she was struggling on a day-to-day -day basis so she needed help uh, and uh, in my family all of us uh, i mean none of us were educated at that time or uh, my mom hadn't gone to school so she didn't understand uh, the only person who was supporting my grandmother with her medicine and taking her to the hospital um, and bringing her is what was my dad and uh, sometimes that would be a lot on him too so uh, he was also having uh, to go to work and then uh, do that too, which uh, sometimes was a lot. Um, and at that time, I was just uh, feeling like I wish I was someone or I wish I was there or I had that knowledge to be there for her, to help her with her medicine, to help her with, uh, uh, you know, giving her what she needed and um, just being there for her um, in a way that uh, would be helpful. So she was my first inspiration. She um, helped me or inspired me to be someone for 
other people who are struggling like that. The other thing that inspired me was um, the healthcare situation in Afghanistan in general, um, especially for women. You know, like the World Health Organization recognizes the top obstacles as lack of access and uh, a shortage of healthcare workers, which is, um, you know, a lot. Uh, Afghanistan is, has 31.6 million people, but 75% uh, of them live in rural areas, which uh, they don't have access to healthcare or they don't have the financial means to access any healthcare. So that just um, is hard to digest sometimes because uh, healthcare is really important. A lot of people are going through a lot of difficult um, situations, which uh, they really need to, uh, they really need someone there to be, to help them. And uh, there's a really, a lot of need for women doctor, doctors around the world, but especially in my country, uh, which uh, is one of the poorest and uh, one of the countries which is struggling a lot on all levels. Uh, so, that has just uh, that situation and uh, just the need for more women doctor doctors around the world, not uh, just in uh, Afghanistan. I mean, even in the US, there's less doctor, female doctors. And a lot of women, I feel like, especially myself and uh, other women that I see, they don't feel comfortable seeing a male doctor. So um, I understand uh, sometimes it's uh, it's important for, for a woman to go see women doctors. So. I really want to be that type of person for someone else who might uh, need me to be there. So, yeah. That's really great. You know, something I we talked about, Hajira, is the about women doctors. And, and one of the things um, I know that is important to Dr. Zike as well is equity. Um, and I think I shared with you that, you know, it's important for me too to have a doctor that looks like me. But unfortunately, just like, you know, in Afghanistan here, um, only 5% of uh, working doctors are black and only 2% of them are black women. And so when cultural competency and equity is important, that is something that we should all think about. But we will all be better off when both of you are doctors and both of you are part of the medical profession. So we're coming up on the last question which is now that we have shared with everyone, what is one thing that you want the audience to carry with them after this event? And so I'm going to start with Saria. I would say that if you're one of those people who's listening right now and trying to get a better grip on your personal wellness, start small. Um, you know, as Dr. Azike was saying, even if it's just, you know, finding one small way every day that you can use as a protected space to take care of yourself before helping others. You know, if it's reaching out to check in on your day with someone regularly, like Hadra and I were doing as mentor or mentee, friend, family member, or, you know, maybe taking a break at the same time every day to go walk in the sunshine, just find something small that you can easily remember to maintain for yourself. Elizabeth, is there one thing that you would like to share? Sure, I think, um, I mean, it's a simple one, but just finding finding joy where we can right now, um, finding joy in, in the small things, the small moments, finding joy in each other and our connections that we have been able to have. Um, and yeah, I just hope that for everybody. That's so great. And Nagam, is there one thing that you would like to share? Uh, yes, so I would say like, um, be patient, like in this pandemic, uh, work as hard as you could if you're in high school or like, in college um, and do do your level best. And even if you are stressed, there's always someone like behind you who's praying for you and like uh, giving his prayers to support you and like give you all of the support and love. That's so great. Hajra? My advice to everyone today would be to take in what Dr. Izeki said and uh, really um, implement those because they really are important and uh, she touched on a lot of important stuff such as um, getting correct uh, information going to um, trusted sites and uh, getting information from there um, and sharing those with people like in the family and around you uh, to help them understand and to help uh, protect them from anything especially I mean right now uh, the COVID pandemic situation is still um, not to where it needs to be. And so the, the advice for that would be just to 
uh, take the vaccine as soon as you can just to help the whole, um, all of us get, come together and uh, um, get over this, uh, which will help us go back to normal much easier than um, how we are right now, so. Well, that's so great. I mean, I want to be very honest. When I was your age, I was not even half this wise. So thank you so much. Thank you to Nagam. Thank you to Hajra. Thank you to Saryu. Thank you to Elizabeth. Um, Girl Forward is lucky to have all of you. And we're so grateful that you shared your stories today. I believe storytelling is a powerful way to create change and to create a community of change. Um, so I wanna thank Dr. Zike as well for being with us tonight. Um, I felt like it was you know, chicken soup for my soul and uh, I felt lifted and I hope all of you did too. Um, we have a short amount of time. Um, I'm not sure if we want to take one very quick question um, out of the chat, I will um, I will leave that to, to Emily. If there's one that you wanna to throw up really quickly for anybody. Okay. The time for questions is, is, is dwindling. So <laughs> you can have 10 more seconds to ask a question. Okay, so barring uh, no questions, I am going to turn it over to Joy. I wanna once again, thank everybody that's been here tonight. Um, Val, Weiss, um, Ashley, um, Emily, you know, Ariel, there's, there was a whole team behind all of this and um, Asra and Dr. Zike and just the entire team that came together to make this happen. So with that said, I'm turning it back over to Joy. Thank you. Well, as, as Mayumi said, we'd like to extend a final thank you to um, everyone who was a part of the event and, and especially to everyone who spoke. So Dr. Zike, Elizabeth Naga, I'm sorry you, Hadra, Ariel, Asra, and, and you as well, Mayumi. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and experience with us tonight. And a special thank you to each of you in the audience for spending your evening at this important event. None of this would be possible without the generosity of people like you who believe in the potential of girls. We are asking you tonight to invest in girls and their future by making a meaningful donation. You can click on the link that's in the chat or simply text GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 312-262-5453. As we enter the 10th year of our programming, your donation will enable us to welcome new arrivals, to build community and to radiate change like never before. So thank you for joining us and have a great evening. Good night. Thank you.